for sure today. Oh, mashallah, like the guy next to me, older brother, may Allah bless him. He can, no, <laughs> like he's one of those guys, he's, like you can see he's like very into his prayer. Like, uh. <laughs> like he's like doing things very slowly and he goes, You're playing Chinese whispers. And then bro, like at the start, like it, it's always used to bother me. Mm. But then I'm like, look, I'm going to start making dua for this guy and see what happens. Bro, after I did that, like the next record, I, can't, I forgot about it. I couldn't even hear it. He heard your dua, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And he started saying it. Fair dinkum. Fair dinkum. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome to the Fair Dinkum podcast. We've got another one for you. This one's after Tarawih, late one, night bro. recording. What'd you say? We've got another one for you. Yeah, another one, another <laughs> one. Um, Today, just past 15th day of Ramadan. Well, 15. Astaghfirullah, I just made up that date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, What's we did date? pass it. Yeah, right. we passed two yeah, week yeah. mark, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, on the that's 16th day. No, 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 we did. We started on a Tuesday. Yeah. Today's Wednesday. Two weeks, yeah, 15th day. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful. So, 15th day of Ramadan, and inshallah. Just By the time this gets released, it's the yeah. 20th day. And there'll be 10 days left. So <laughs> That's actually a good point. So, Eid yeah. Mubarak, <laughs> Mubarak, if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> but Wallah Ramadan went so quick, you yeah. know? And even last week's episode, like, just that consciousness, like, what if this is our last Ramadan? It's actually like, it's trying to make... <laughs> Why is it making eye contact? <laughs> <laughs> it's making, like, it's it's making me want to make the most of it. Alhamdulillah. You know, yeah. Which yeah. is good. But like, how have you guys been making the most of it? What have you been doing? Like, you just told me before you stopped reading The Alchemist. So what have you been, <laughs> since the last episode, so what do you want to, what have you been doing? I say sorry to the author, personally. What did you do to the author? Sorry, brother. <laughs> Come second, man. My religion comes first. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Allah Mubarak. Nah, um, <laughs> recently, uh, I don't think I don't think I've been doing nothing too crazy. Like I think a lot of people nowadays are thinking, you know, you get into Ramadan, you gotta go into this rush. And da-da-da. A lot of the times, and I listen to something um, from I think Nama Ali Khan was talking about it. He, he was talking about Ramadan in general. He goes, he goes. I know that you can't really maximize the Deen because you haven't been reading Quran for the longest time. Just try and bring into it this like this thought. And he, he was talking about how the way, um, just talk to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He goes, but when you talk to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you have to receive as well. And the only way you receive, he sent a book down with his words. Mm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks back to you. Do you know what I mean? So the, the way a conversation works, especially with someone that you love, it's usually two-way communication. So what we're doing is we're not allowing two-way communication if we block off the response. Because there's there's things in the Quran like, you know, I don't even know if I said that correctly. But don't quote me, but Allah SWT responds to the one who, who calls, upon calls upon him. Mm-hmm. And basically like, that is like anyone who's feeling in distress and whatever and they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please help me. If they read the Quran and they saw that verse in the Quran, bang, you hit them. Okay, yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is literally telling me, I'm there. I'm listening. So you're saying like in Ramadan, you're trying to like pray more and read more Quran. So well, talk to Allah more because that's when you talk, obviously, prayer and then read more, like read his kitab. See, it's difficult to talk about it on this, on this platform yeah. because I know there's a lot of people watching. For, for our stand, there's a lot of people watching. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the difficult thing about talking about things like this is it kind of like flusters the intention, you know? Mm. Like a lot of the time I look at it and I'm like, ah, oh, when I get home, I shouldn't have said that. Or I didn't really want to develop on it. I want to keep it between me and Allah SWT only mm. because of how much intentions waver. Yeah? So for me, I won't, I won't, I won't go into too much depth, but the, the, the main thing for me this Ramadan that I've been working on without going too in-depth about what I'm doing yeah. And like to like the specifics of what's yeah. going on, it's just basically creating a bond between me and Allah. Mm. Like that's like the main thing for me, you mm. know, making sure that He's my um He's like my first, like the first person, yeah. like not first, the first one I go to, mm. and the first one I look for answers from, yeah. you know, for comfort and whatever. So Priority, it's yeah. just like yeah. so, like relying more on Allah as well with your mm. affairs or whatever's going on in your life. Yeah, bro. It's, it's like Prophet Yaqub, how he goes, like I only complain to Allah. Mm. It's like a, a common thing we do is we complain to every single person but Allah And we don't ask him for help which like why isn't it getting better We just ask why 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 but it's like how often do we wake up for tahajjud or make dua kind of mm. thing for it It's like how bad do you want it No one's got the answers No one has the answers mm. for you A lot of people can just give you a one two line And then you can leave But you don't really like recall what they said most of the time Like it hits you on the moment you know But when you go looking for the answer yourself mm. It sticks with you Like mm. Mm. The not only the, the 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 quote or say for example the the verse of the Quran that you find 
but the actual lesson that you gathered from it had made you mm. feel when you like move away from the situation and you go into the situation again you're kind of like oh what did that guy tell me like you don't remember what they said but i went looking for this answer i know mm. exactly where to find it and then this helped me mm. when i was in this situation a lot of the times yeah like that in itself is the most important thing for us as humans the reminder benefits the believer and the reminder is there it doesn't change yeah. you know it's always there so and kick it off time that's one big thing about ramadan as well the reminder is constantly there um but in terms of like how ramadan's been going for me bro it's still chill i I'm, i'm enjoying it that's that's the main thing well i one thing as well is like like i don't realize the blessings of one day until one day passes You know what I mean? Like you said 15 days before I'm like, "Yo, 15." You know, I mean? that's why I actually said it, you know, I was like 15. Yeah. It wasn't because like whether it was 13, 14 or 16, it was like damn 15 days have passed away and honestly it's felt like two days. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like we recorded the other episode when we were speaking about Ramadan two days ago. But that was like a week ago, you know what I mean? And it just like like I said on the other episode like Ramadan, just, I don't know, there's a lot of emphasis on time. Like how am I making the most of my time and like blessing. That's why like The way that like I track my Ramadan is I like, compare it to like last year's Ramadan. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. And like cuz last year's Ramadan I remember we were sitting with um we having dinner with Sheikh Bilal and then after we're talking about how like how the Ramadan during corona affected all of us. Mm. You know, we're having dinner here. Yeah. yeah? Was and it during after, Ramadan? No, nah, just after. It was after Ramadan. Yeah. It was after Ramadan, but we were reflecting yeah, back yeah, on yeah. Ramadan. And okay. like I remember all of you guys saying like oh yeah, this was my best Ramadan. Mm. Yeah, and all this kind of stuff, and I'm, I didn't agree with that. You know what I mean? I didn't voice my opinion as much. You know what I mean? Um, Why is that? I don't. Know, I felt disconnected from the convo or from the no, no, no. From Ram- I felt like my Ramadan was was disconnected based off of coronavirus. You know what I mean, and us being in lockdown and whatnot. You know what I mean, and then now when I reflect back on it this year, I don't realize how much time I had then compared to what I had yeah. now. You know what I mean? Like today, like getting up early. More time, more opportunities. More time, more opportunities, and I was much, much more focused. But because I set the standard so high on myself during lockdown, yeah, I got all this time. I can do all of this. I felt like I wasn't achieving that much, much. You know what I mean? But when you compare what I was achieving mm. now to back then, it's just like, and you just got to take it for granted. You know what I mean? Like mm. you've been given the ability to do this, then why not? I was reading something. I was listening to something the other day, and there was this. Um, I don't know where I heard it from. Yeah, but it was like an Instagram post or whatever. It's like, oh, if the people of the grave were to be asked, um, if they were asked for one favor, one thing they wanted, like a, like a du'a or something to be accepted, they'd ask for one day of Ramadan. I'm sitting there like on my phone on Instagram, like, yeah, shut the phone off. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. You know I mean? Instagram can wait. Yeah, Instagram can wait. <laughs> But yeah, it's it, it's different for everyone. Mm. You know so you mean? still haven't like clocked the Ramadan yet, yeah? You're still in I still haven't. And I probably won't until the mm. 10th day. Yeah, it's and good. Yeah. That's and good though. You know what I mean? Because like I take it day by day yeah. and I enjoy it. And as every day passes, I go, yo, like this is, mm. this is nice. You know Especially I mean? the last 10 days, like everyone kind of knows like time's running out. This, it finishes next week. Mm. You know, there's only a couple of days left. You're doing Tadjur Tadawe. You're making the most of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's, it's a good thing because uh, another thing is you haven't burnt out. A yeah. lot of people burn out and they're like, I've been to the mosque every day. I haven't missed a day. I, I want to have a day off or whatever. It's like the last 10 days is when you're supposed to go the hardest, you know, yeah. fini- like finish the race off, at like with all the energy, all your your heart, your brain. Mm. Do you guys set goals for yourself at the start of the month? And like, do you track it as you go along? Astaghfirullah, I find it cringy. Yeah, no, I, I, honestly, I, like, you find oh, the what? I didn't I find do it cringy. I, I, haven't, I, I don't think I've ever done Ramadan. Mm-hmm. But you know, when I did like the 40 day challenge, yeah. I said to myself, let me do it for Ramadan. Then I'm like, Nah, actually I won't. Why? And then th- today I regretted it. Because Allah, I regret it too. Sorry. Yeah, because like, the for example, when we're doing the challenge, I'm like once at the mosque. And then it was a normal habit. Now it's like, I just say tarawih at the mosque. And it's like, but if I had that challenge on, every single day I'd be going duhr at the mosque. I'd be going asr. I'd be going um, You'd be fajr. Yourself, I'd be yeah. saying, let's go fajr. But how realistic is that with your schedule? But, but fajr, it's half an hour after suhoor. I'm already up. I could push myself more like but when I had a, have goals and I was like okay at least I know like I want to go to Fajr at the mosque I want to mm. do this like it is realistic and also even if it's unrealistic you could say one day a week but if you write it down you know you want to achieve it yeah. if you don't even if it's never been in front of you like I don't even know if I want to do it yeah I know so you mean it? so it's like now only I only go to Tarawih at the mosque but it's like Ramadan it's like 27 times the reward and you know like yeah, should, should but what, what, why do you yeah. regret it though why do you regret it because like it, w- it would be nice if I started the month off with all with my mindset now that's all it is like you know yeah. so I could have like made the most of it see how we said that one day it's like I wish for the last 14 days I went 
mosque more often. Because mm. here I said like b- building a bond with Allah. Mm. It's you can build a bond with praying at home, and obviously it's like the Sunnah prayers is better to pray at home and stuff. But I don't know, it's a different feeling praying in the mosque, especially because last year we missed out. Even just praying Sunnah in the mosque, you kind of like make it a little longer, make it a little sweeter. Oh, so you work off the vibe of tar- like like tar- not, not tar- and not at all. Ramadan. You seeing the brothers and not, stuff like that. Not even tar- because sometimes like my salat my shoes, like it can oh, get affected. Normal, yeah, yeah. But even just going to the mosque and praying Isha or praying the or praying Asr, it kind of Encouraged me to pray a sunnah after Maghrib Or pray the sunnah yeah. after Dhuhr like our, And when I pray the sunnah I don't just rush it Because I'm not running somewhere else yeah. You're in the place to worship But when I'm in my bedroom I do it Then I say Okay let me go do my other stuff on the list and You see yeah. a lot of things A yeah. lot of distractions And Qu- all that kind of stuff yeah. Quick question to you boys do you, guys, do you guys get motivated more to pray Or do you feel like your khushu' is better In public or in private Like at a, at a jama'ah prayer Or like a, or like a, like a congregational prayer at the mosque or at home by yourself? I want to answer that question, yeah. Um, I feel my khushu is at its highest to a degree during certain salat. Yeah, like for example, we were speaking about the other day, like the, the, the night prayers, like your maghrib, your ishas, and your, like your fajrs technically. Mm. And that's only because, I don't know why, but like the Quran is being like recited outwardly. You know what I mean? So it's just like you can hear it more and then you're attentive and all that mm. kind of stuff. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? But sometimes with the, like the other salat, like the duhr and the asr, like you're more within your thoughts and you, your thoughts can come to you and whatnot, like whispers and stuff. And that, that doesn't depend whether I'm in, what do you call it, jama'ah or yeah. like whether I'm in the masjid or not. You know what I mean? It's just whether something's being recited out loud. And I don't know what the reason for that is, but yeah, what are you guys? Oh, no, I know what you mean. Sometimes, sorry, bro. You know, ahead. I was going to say, um, for me, it's, I would have more khushu, like I usually have more khushu at the mosque because mm-hmm. I feel like going to the mosque is like because if you're at home you have more distractions. It's, I feel like for me there's more things on my mind. So for example, if I'm praying, it's like okay, I know what I'm doing straight after this prayer. But then if I'm at the mosque, it's like you kind of have more time to finish that prayer and there's more time to go to that uh, that next commitment, whatever it is. Like there's more time, ta- bigger time period. Mm. So then you you kind of like there's no there's not as much of a rush. Because at home, like, it's more obviously the mosque is your comfort, comfort zone, but your house is just even more comfort zone where it's like there's more distractions, there's more things going on, mm. helping other people. It's the whole thing with the environment, you know, the to- topic habits. Mm. You know yeah. I mean, when you're creating an, a habit or whatnot, changing the environment, mm. like, makes a big difference. Like, for me, like, writing work, like, like essays or stuff like that, I find it easiest to do, at, like, at my desk at home or at a coffee shop. You know I mean, like with white noise, yeah. you know what I mean? I can still write regardless of where I am, but in terms of like the efficiency and whatnot, it de- like depends on the environment. So the I get, I un- understand. The atomic habits you were speaking, like you, ha- you have habits in your environment. Mm-hmm. Like on your bed, you're not going to be as productive. No, you're not. But on your desk, you make that environment productive. But I think you're talking about the sincerity kind of point. And I remember one of the first things you told me was like, this is like Latrobe. I remember because I was paying sunnah like at the mosque <laughs> or something. President but days? Uh, Allah alam. Okay. Um, but one of the first <laughs> things you told me is whatever you do in public that other people see, you should do the same in private. That's what you told me. I don't know if it was like a advice for the time, but Allah alam. I still remember that. I was, you know, always I'm always conscious of that. And I was listening to a sincerity podcast mm. recently. So I'd say a couple of things. But last time we spoke about it, and I think we we're saying that Hamza Yusuf was saying like, even if you your intention's insincere or your intention wavers, it's still better to do the deed than leave it. Wrestle with the intention. Yes. Rather than, uh, and yeah. Imam Ahmed got asked this. He goes, why is it that my, my salat is better when I'm in public? And then like, you know, when I'm at the mosque, you know, and this, this is a normal thing because sometimes you have more khushur because someone's watching, like, let me stand up a little straighter yeah. or something like that. And it's a normal thing, you know, it's a, the heart of the believer moves up and down, you know. But he said, you don't do, you do your salat, your khushur, Changes with the people Not for the people mm-hmm. And that's what he said mm. Obviously you might think sometimes But it's like Ali said the environment So he's with the people mm. But he's not He's not thinking The guy on my right The entire salat is watching me yeah, yeah. People aren't watching you When you mm. pray Maybe people look at you For a couple of seconds yeah. but That's Imam Ahmed's advice And it's one of those things Like even If sincerity goes astray It's something Where we're going to tackle You know yeah. And even I remember one One of the salaf said all the good deeds I do in public, I don't even count as good deeds. I only count what I do in private. Mm. And if on the if on the day of judgment Allah accepts the one I do in, pub, in public, alhamdulillah. But mm. I know in private is the only ones I count. It's like imagine mm. if we did that. 
It's like Muhammad Ali, oh. I don't count the push ups until they hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know? Yeah, yeah. And I, I know, know for me, for sincerity, like, there's li- there's time where my khushu is better. Like, if I have in it, if it's right before I sleep, I know my khushu, I'm tired. Yeah. Like, astaghfirullah, but you might not want to prolong your salat. But well, that's part uh, of being a human. Human, yeah. yeah, you're only human. But I know when I'm like, so when I read like a longer surah, or when I'm practicing a surah, I kind of, my khushu gets a little better, or when I like, the Dawah man's got a very interesting lecture Like pray like you've never prayed before It's mm-hmm. one of his first ones Like seven years ago mm-hmm. I watched it It was actually funny Like 40 minutes yeah, Was he early? No, no, no oh. This is back in the days <laughs> Yeah, early days It's actually very interesting it. But he always, <laughs> talk, he always talks about like meeting Allah See, you said your bond mm-hmm. It's like if Allah was actually in front of you well, Would you come like this? No, you might wear like a very nice Yeah, I know what you're talking about You put atar, you put a kufi on mm. You try to be the most presentable, you know Like if someone if someone's presentable is coming yeah. in the room You're going to be at your best So 100%. these kind of things improve my khushu mm. And that's why like going to the mosque I might be wearing a third, wearing a kufi Taking atar, using miswak And it's like the environment is to pray mm. But here, I'm like, oh, I got soccer training And then I have to leave in seven minutes So let me pray maghrib Pray in front of the TV Or you pray Yeah, it's all, wherever, it's all kind of rushed On a dirty floor So sincerity is a difficult thing And another but thing is Like another distraction Is reciting the same sort as you do all the time Yeah Like the quick ones Like you might be going to a soccer match Yeah, I got that under the bag mm. That sounds like, like a had. Twitter post Huh? That sounds like a Twitter post <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the whole thing at Asad and time and that Yeah, I know what you're talking about <laughs> But do you get what I mean? And that's yeah. one way where Kushwa, You know how you said In terms of like Like Act as if like, today is your last prayer Or this is going to be the last mm. prayer That's what a lot of the imams say oh, Just yeah, as yeah, you're, yeah. you're starting right your salat, the salat yeah. Right before the salat You know what I mean Pretend and like Malik al Mouds behind you yeah, Pretend yeah, yeah. like Malik mm. al behind you And also like even with like Quran Like read a surah that you've practiced You know what I mean Because first mm. of all You're going to be more like energized Or like more motivated To go practice something Outside of the salat And also when you get into salat You try not to make mistakes You know what I mean Because mm. you're actually focusing On what verses you're reciting mm. You know what I mean And that makes a big it, impact as it's well It's crazy how like Sincerity You're conscious of it though too You know mm. like when you give When you pray Or when you do something Like you actually Why did you ask the question Like you know What came to your mind I don't know I was just thinking about My own stuff man Like when it comes to like um, Like just being a human in general When you hear that people share Like common Not common or they sh- Like we share problems mm. Or we share issues And there's like that element Of relatability You can see How much this isn't just specifically how bad mm. you are. It's just basically part of the human dynamic, you know. Um, a lot of the times, whenever we see something is normal or it's a part of the human struggle, like for example, a common thing is like when a sin repeats on someone's mind, yeah. Um, a lot of the times, like I would I'd be praying, even when I'm praying, or even in Ramadan and the shaitan's not around, yeah. Like he's not doing waswasa. And you're like, okay, so why am I still thinking about a bad deed that I've done if the shaitan's not at play here? Mm. You know what I mean? And then I sit down and then I go, it's probably a part of the human the human thing, you know? Like a lot of the times I wanted to ask shuyukh or a psychologist or something like, what is it? Is it normal for a person to remember a sin? Because like, for example, I don't know, that bag is orange and then... I was in mm. a place that had an orange wall, and I'd so done reminds you wrong. of it. You know what yeah. I mean? Even like if it, even if it's something you like, you've asked for forgiveness. And exactly. It's still on your mind. I've but had it, that before as well. And it still comes back. You're thinking that the sin. Was Is the like <laughs> sometimes there's a reason why you remember? Yeah. Sometimes it's like, was I forgiven for it? it Triggers istighfar, yeah. It's just like actually I gotta make more istighfar. Obviously, you should keep making istighfar. Yeah. It's not something you stop doing. It's but it's like, well, did I make enough tawbah? Was I sincere? Kind of thing yeah. Or did I go back to it Like it's different Because sometimes There might be like Emotion connected to it yeah. But like for example For me um, Imam Al-Junaid says When you repent from a sin Forget about it Yeah So you don't hold on to it Because it's going to Pull you back yeah. Allah's the most merciful I kind of have that Like try to find Like Allah's rahmah So like, oh, yeah. look for that So it's like Repent Obviously sincere tawbah Follow the guidelines But then I look at it as like Forget about it and move on Because <coughs> if not It might hold me back Don't get me wrong Like when, whenever I've like, like It hits Yeah the thought hits The thing that frustrates me Isn't the, th- the, the The aftermath Like Because I'm sitting there And I'm dwelling on it For an hour or Two hours And I'm still disappointed Or I'm Like The, the process probably lasts 15 seconds oh. It's the actual idea Of it Reoccurring consistently Yeah mm. On random times You know Like I'm in the middle of Sujood you know Sometimes you close your eyes And you're in sujood and then you just remember, think, bang, okay. Damn, can't believe I did yeah, that. Yeah, I'll go through that. Huh? Does it put your whole salah off? It doesn't put the whole salah off, but it happens. And then you kind of like remember 10 seconds. You're like, okay, Allah SWT 
has, he says he forgives you got to forget the sins say astaghfirullah la ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu minadh move it's just constant yeah. fighting yeah? like fighting your thoughts but the thing is the re- the fact that it reoccurs and it might yeah. be the same thing you know mm. but it that's the only thing that frustrated me and then finding out that there's an element of relatability with other human beings like it's yeah. just not me or i'm not suffering from OCD or whatever mm. it is at this time yeah. it's just something that humans struggle with in general and it's just you, you tell yourself okay it's an ongoing battle until you die but there obviously some sort of wisdom behind it because Allah mm. Taala wouldn't let things happen mm. yeah. unless there was a reason you know yeah. mm. so the, the reason why I asked oh, it was a massive tangent <laughs> to bring it back to what yeah. I was saying but the reason why I was asking about like sincerity is because I wanted to see if there's an element of rela- relatability to my own situation Mm. You know, mm. and a lot of the times talking about it, just you know, it, it, it kind of helps yeah. because, like, to be honest, I go through that as well. Like, it's just so random as well. Like, you close your eyes for two seconds, and then it just comes back. It's like, why is it even there? I swear, I've been asking for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Mm. But one thing I heard that kind of put it in perspective and like have hope for Allah's mercy was I seen from Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim. I'll just get it up. He said yes, that Sheikh. He said that there's a hundred <laughs> levels of shades of Allah's mercy. But only like one of them is dis- have been de- been displayed on this earth, like in creation of oh God, mm. and that's like from, you know, a mother's mercy towards her child, or between Muslims to each other, mm. and the nine nine other levels are like retained with him. Allahu alam, maybe on day judgment, I don't know, mm. but like that just puts in perspective like how he's, he's th- th- how merciful there's mercy he is. waiting for us. Yeah, Subhanallah. So it's like that kind of gives you hope to yeah, kind of think like if it keeps coming to your mind in prayer. Mm. And you have to you have to just keep asking for forgiveness, even though it's something that happened two three years ago. Mm-hmm. And even the khushu thing, like we all go through it. Mm. I know that for sure. Like sometimes tarawih, it's a long it's a long tarawih, and my mind goes, and I'm like, why? You know, and I have the thing like even today, I was like, no, what if this is my last tarawih? I'm trying to focus, <laughs> and then I go astray, and it's like, nah, come back. And it's a normal thing. It's a very very yeah. normal thing. You know, I don't want to go too deep later like on this but there's yeah. a story I got, I'll tell you guys later about very interesting mm. one thing you even know? happened to me for like for sure today oh, mashallah like the guy next to me older brother may Allah bless him he he c- <laughs> like he's one of those guys he's, like you can see he's like very into his prayer like, uh. <laughs> like he's like doing things very slowly and he goes you're playing Chinese whispers and then bro like at the start like it, it's always used to bother me mm. but then I'm like look I'm gonna start making dua for this guy and see what happens bro after I did that, like the next record, I can't. I forgot about. It. I couldn't even hear it. You heard your dua, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. And he started saying it. Okay, Allah, make this guy stop. It turns around, it's just, like I think that's one. I think that's one of the things. You, how you can battle your thoughts? Just making dua, like for example, mm. for that guy, mm. for yourself. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah. it's constant battle. It's every day. I hate the burpees at the masjid, Allah. Yeah, Ramadan. Those, those, those lads put my khushu off, man. May Allah reward them. You know what it is, because. Yeah. When <laughs> not to get too explicit, yeah. <laughs> but when they burp, cause you can tell what they had as well. Do you know what I mean? Like I know you had a fluff just before you came here. Do you know what I mean? Extra That's tahini, <laughs> fresh. <laughs> but they're bad ones, and I can't. Like when I tell you, like I actually cannot focus. Yeah, like it puts me off to the point. Yeah, I'm thinking about like, like a two rakah salat becomes ten minutes for some reason. Cause I'm thinking, bro, let me get away from this guy. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean, it sounds a bit dramatic or whatnot. Do you know what I mean? But it's like it's it's that. But that's it's why I have a negative association with burping. Do you know what I mean? Because uh. well, like my <laughs> my best experiences have been wrecked. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So but I want to bring it back to one thing Sue said. Yeah, why do you find it cringe setting goals prior to Ramadan? Because I actually think it's um a good thing. Oh no, what's this guy going? Come back! I know you're a goal setter, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, the reason I would find it cringe. It cringe yeah. Do you know how the way there's just things that you can gravitate towards and there's things you just can never do it? Mm-hmm. Like me, like I'm not saying that goal setting doesn't work. I honestly believe it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to like negate what everyone else does, but yeah. and this might just me speaking out of ignorance as well, but for me, when it comes to like planning something and then ticking off a checklist, it seems less organic. Seems like a little bit more forced rather than something that I I done out of my own will. Yeah, yeah. Or like because I wanted to, you know what I mean. Like although although there's there's elements of like sincerity in, for example, um, yeah, praying all my prayers on time. Or because I'm not gonna say that I've never ever planned. Mm. Yeah, but I just I feel like the things that I, I I kind of not spontaneously come across or feel. Yeah. Yeah. 
but I feel like there's a greater connection for me mm. whenever I do something out of my own will rather than because I had a checklist to do it. So you so you like the vibes of Ramadan, basically like you just go with how ev- like with what time presents. Basically. I'm awake a lot of the time. That's the problem. Yeah. Okay. The problem is when I'm awake a lot of the time, <laughs> it it takes me longer to gra- grasp what I'm thinking or feeling. Mm-hmm. So whenever I get to sit down in the situation, yeah, and I get to and I get to just kind of like, you know, let it come to me, you know, and like mm. just feel, like feel the vibe or whatever it is, mm. it's. It has a lasting impression on me. But when it's something where I'm like, okay, yeah, I smashed out all my sunnahs. Now I'm going to go and do my my um, my witr prayer. When I'm done with the witr, I'm going to go read 30 minutes of the Quran. When 30 minutes of the Quran is done, I'm going to move on to reading Quran before I go to sleep and I'll do wudu. And then when I'm asleep, bro, I'm, my mind's going like a million miles per hour because then I've got a checklist for tomorrow. Yeah. It's a never-ending process like to improve in that as well, to do more every day. You know what I mean? And yeah. then like, I'm thinking about tomorrow's checklist. Oh yeah, when I get up, I can fucking smash this thing out 30 minutes in the morning. I won't rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just the type of so guy. That's a personal thing. Yeah, it's yeah. your personality. Yeah. So you don't have like yeah. a negative association to it though. Like with other it's people doing it. I, bro, I've tried. No, I don't, I don't yeah. really. Like, I'm not looking at somebody else and saying, oh yeah. No, because I'm, I, when you said cringe, I find it cringe when... Ali's stomach just joined the podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, um, I have a negative association when Like it's publicly idolized You know what I mean Because that's when I find it cringe Like for example at the start of Ramadan Instagram becomes like a day before T- To an extent it might be a good thing But like Instagram becomes this page Where everyone just says Hey I'm going to do this, do this, do this publicly mm. You know what I mean Whereas like that should be just between you yeah. and. But it's it's and obviously Allah, everyone's yeah. different, and it's like yeah, hundred percent. Some people some people thrive off that, so, like obviously their personality. Yeah. I know like a lot of people like they say I'm gonna do this challenge, and they like to do like say what they're gonna do before they even do it. Mm-hmm. You know that's how they get motivated. Like obviously, I said, that's my negative yeah. association. But the act itself of goal setting and checklist and all that kind of stuff, yeah. I think it's one of the best things. Yeah. And I only realized that when like I guess my life got a bit more busy and I started to become more forgetful. I got a book frame for that. D- no, uh, he'll read one page and he'll be like, "I was wrong." About uh, which was about, about priorities and time management and yeah, the importance yeah, yeah. of it. How about destructive productivity? And Imam Ghazali doesn't talk about that. Who's Imam Ghazali, bro? And talk about Jordan and Peterson. And even Jordan <laughs> Peterson. <laughs> yeah. uh, as a Muslim, I d- yeah, <laughs> it's a different you disagree thing. Disagree with it? We'll talk. We'll get, we'll get a sheikh and then we'll talk about that. You know, obviously. What's your opinion, though? What's your opinion? L- life should be balanced. Okay. You know, you talk. We hear the stories of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He wasn't every single day like. He didn't have a checklist. He'd enjoy himself. He'd play with Hassan and Hussein. The stories. He'd hang out with, like, play with um, his wives. You know, he, uh, he would play with his friends. He'd go on trips and do whatever. Like, nah, he, the, the he had a balance where it wasn't like us. Our idea of productivity is reading Quran and then going to the mosque and then doing this three-hour halakha. Yeah. He didn't have that life. It was a well-balanced, well-rounded kind of but thing. But the Rasul yeah, yeah. is the Rasul. Huh? But he's the person we're supposed to emulate. No, but the thing is with that is the fact that we try to strive to be like him, and if we don't have like kind of like an an idea of what he did, we didn't have like guidelines to what he mm. did, which is probably what a checklist looks like. Yeah. You know what I mean? But my then checklist that I'm talking about isn't about product productivity though. It's more about getting things sort of done, if that oh, makes sense. Needs you to know get what I mean? Done. Like I become so forgetful, like we might have to plan for an episode and I forget about that. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna feel any more better if I do or don't. Mm. Well, I probably will, yeah, but it won't be a good thing if I don't plan for it. And because I might have other things to do. And that's the thing with Ramadan, because you tend to become a bit more busy during Ramadan. You know what I mean? Like time becomes, mm. I don't know, I keep bringing back but time and all that kind of stuff. As a like we're doing a podcast at 11 a, o'clock. At a ta- I mean? As a talib al-ilm, as a student of knowledge, the, the only mindset you should have is making the most of your time. Hence, yeah. And yeah. As, a, like, as a student of knowledge, they say, it's not even having free time. It's like everything you do is around the ilm. When you, when you eat, read a book. When you go into the shops, listen to a podcast. When you're in bed right before you sleep, like learn something else Do maraja When you go to the mosque Every single thing you do it, when you're, Even when you're in the shower When you're getting changed Be listening to a podcast Remember last time you were saying Which one? What did I say? Um, I don't know You gave me a podcast And like I listened to this in the shower <laughs> Which one? I don't know I sound like yeah, a weirdo But it's one of those <laughs> things Where it's like Everything you're supposed to If you are, if you count yourself As a student of knowledge This is not for everyone Not everyone's yeah. a student of knowledge But yeah. those people It's like You're supposed to be as productive As possible you know And that's your goal mm. But if you You know like just 
in you know studying when you can and obviously you're working it's a different life mm-hmm. your goal isn't supposed to be productive 24 hours of the day because that's detrimental to most people yeah you know it's like sure. what athletes do the man of work lebron james puts in his body i wouldn't be able to do that mm. he's doing th- th- he's doing it he'll go deep tissue massage oh, then he'll go 300 uh negative 300 degrees into a f- like for Bro, recovery he will hey. eat this specific meal and then sleep but he's, he goes his <laughs> wife hates that he sleeps at 7 p.m to get 12 Bro, hours if yeah. you get paid what lebron gets paid you'll do it in Bro, you see what he made he made he made he made that his lifestyle and, uh, and NBA players they can make it their lifestyle they didn't do you remember the kobe story that ali gave kobe so when kobe was 16 he was, he was, you know, they do like, they do regions here in Melbourne, mm-hmm. like the south, north. Me- so he got picked for his region, okay, under 16s. Yep. Him, Tracy McGrady, no, who was it? Who, who told the story? Stephen Jackson told the story on his episode. But him, he yeah, Stephen, ja- someone. yeah, Stephen Jackson, and I'll talk, t- tell him the story. Him at 16, he got, he got picked for the team, okay? 16 year olds, they all go to another s- city. Imagine, you, like in America, you're from LA and you go to, uh, another city Just Brooklyn, yeah. yeah you go to Brooklyn And you're going to enjoy yourself Yeah 16 All of them can They know someone Who can get themselves Into a club Every single person Is like I want to get myself I want to go into The club The 16 They're in another city They can get underage he, he goes no Saturday night I need to watch a film And get my knees iced So he, got, he went Trained They all went clubbing He trained Knees iced Film Slept at 8pm Woke up at 3 And did training At 16 mm-hmm. mm. That's his mindset Every other person is like, you're crazy. But that's why he made it to that top level. Mm. And it's the sacrifices that he's supposed to do. LeBron, even if LeBron wasn't getting paid that much, he'd do it. Now, LeBron, the other day... LeBron would do the exact injured. same thing. You know thing. how he had his ankle injury? Mm-mm. The guy sitting on the... Just he's yeah, yeah. balancing his ankles. See? I was like, it's, wow. It's, honestly, money, you know money. These guys, it's their mindset. The same as a student of knowledge. You'd mm. hear about people who were, had zero dollars, but they were studying 16 hours a day, memorizing the Quran eight, nine hours a day. It's it's all it's about your mindset. Yeah. Come yeah. to your purpose. Yeah, your purpose. Yeah, like they, 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 when they were young, they knew that, or they thought to themselves, "That's it. I wanted yeah. to be the greatest basketballer of all time." Yeah. Or there's people who wake up and they're like, "Okay, now I'm going to dedicate my life to Dean." You know, mm. I just want to seek knowledge for the rest of my life, which is probably the most ideal thing you want to do if you wanted to, if you wanted to, obviously raise what are they called? Yeah, yeah your rank, like your level. You have to. Mm. You have to. Is yeah. at the start of um, what was Ghazali's book? The one that I was telling, I was reading the orange one. Yeah, yeah. You read what book of knowledge? The first yeah, one? bro. The first page, straight away, he talks about the importance of seeking knowledge, yeah. man. Off the, off the bat, mm. he, he's like, um, he's like, um, the the thing is, the reason why knowledge is so important is because it gets rid of ignorance. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, and for, sure, for the, sure. When you get rid of ignorance, you can't, you kind of can't get away from how do, how do, accountability. Yeah, it's it's true. It's like, for example, with fiqh. When you know if something, for example, as a like, uh, uh, I don't want to go into too much fiqh, but th- when you know something, like if your wudu is right, if you, this is wrong, this breaks your wudu, you're accountable. It's like witr, for example, for me. Mm. Like, it's, it's wajib for Hanifi to pray witr. Mm. So I'm accountable. You guys can just pray Isha, then go to sleep. I'm like, no, I have to. But it's only because I know the fiqh. Yeah. So knowledge kind of like, it takes away, you have to be accountable. Yeah. You know, it takes away ignorance and then mm. accountability. But then it also... It gives you the good deeds for that action. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because um, if you're doing something unknowingly, you might get the rewards or the just desserts for this world, but you didn't know you were doing it for Allah SWT's yeah. sake. So you might not get the rewards in the hereafter. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So yeah, there's. And amal. Yeah, so it's kind of like yeah. efficiency in what you do, you know? Mm. You kind of get the full this world and next world. Did you benefit. start that book? I've. Not in Ramadan, but uh, I Shab- started Malang it like a, uh, I started a bit Still of it. Still got the yeah. <laughs> 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 Both orange books. <laughs> 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 Both orange books. 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 Both books. Both orange 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 books. So Come what else on. have you, Ali? You've been watching some videos in Ramadan. Yeah, so I've been listening. Um, I'm not sure if people have heard, but there's a series called Meeting Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Omar Sulaiman in Yaqeen Institute. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, there's only about twelve epi- episodes. I think. I think there's one episode a day. I've only watched a few. I'm still catching up, but it's pretty interesting because the first, obviously, there's a trailer of the series. How like what he's going to talk about, you know, and also. So the first episode was interviewing people from different ages, different cultures, asking him like, so how was your first time in Medina? 
like for people that have went, mm. well, like what do you think of Medina? Mm. Um, what do you think of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do you know who he is? How would you, how would you be if he was like in your presence or? And he also he asked her, like a profound question. He said, "What would you say to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if he knocked on your door and wanted to come in? And like like and when you opened it, he gave salams to you. So this is Rasulullah. He has more beautiful face than the full moon. Mm. He's always smiling." And it's just like he also, like Prophet Muhammad, makes everyone feel beloved to him. Like I think I heard a narration. Don't quote me on this one, but then people in the village, like even like the worst of people, like with like the actions and that, they felt like they were best friends with Rasulullah mm. because of the way he acted in his mannerism towards these people. Mm. So like I want to ask, what would you guys say? I know it's not easy to answer, but <laughs> should have let us prepare for this. Yeah. <laughs> I was, shocked, I was shocked. I was little. shocked as well. Yeah. Um. But like, f- if you guys can't think of one, I can just say, I was thinking like, if I was to inshallah, if we all get get to Jannah, if I was to meet him, honestly, I'd like give him a big hug. <laughs> He's just a beautiful man, mashallah. So, um. But then I was just like, I would firstly thank him. I was like, thank you for like setting these standards of like, you know, the characteristics and like mannerism to, to how a Muslim is, and like I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for you, like the attributes that you told us to, like you, you set out for us. Mm-hmm. It's pretty surreal. Like yeah. I'm kind of lost for words as well. I'm kind of just thinking on the spot. Even to have shukr, it's that's a that's a very good mindset because like we're supposed to emulate our lives after him. Like yeah. we have to be grateful. Now I didn't even think of that. So that's a yeah. So we're meeting him here or in Jannah. <laughs> well, inshallah, no, <laughs> but that's well, like in your Jannah dream, I mean, in your dream, yeah. possibly. But yeah. you know, it's a hypothetical question. Because if it's in Jannah, I won't ask him to make dua. I'm already there. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, mm. I, g- I get what you mean. I like in the time of the Prophet, everyone would ask for dua. I think I've had a s- I'd have a story time. Yeah. Like just chill. Nah, but the first but thing... It depends. It depends. Yeah. If it's what? here, you ask him to make dua to Allah yeah. to give you Jannah and you get there, accepted. Though. If, no. it's in, if it's in Jannah, I'm just going to sit down for him. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm where did Yasser Qadi make a mistake? So I can know more. <laughs> 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 I want to know more. I want to know everything. Done. <laughs> <Don't. laughs> <laughs> I'm not done like that. I'm just saying, like, there's so much depth that we're yeah. still missing out on. We we'll still you want know? you on the show, yes, yeah, 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 that's the <laughs> best, most authentic thing to listen to. Mm. Highly recommend. But yeah, it's, it's a beautiful series. Like, I'm st- still finding out like how his mannerism were to people. What were their answers? Like some of them, they didn't. Obviously, they're cutting through mm. different people in the footage. But then some people were just like, they were shocked first time hearing the question. Like, oh, I don't know what to mm. say. One person like was breaking down, like saying, "Shukr," and you know. Thank you, Rasulullah, for like guiding us and that. They're talking as if hypothetical. Mm. They make Jannah, inshallah. Yeah. No, seriously, I'm thinking about the question. I wouldn't ask for anything. I just want to have a chat yeah. about yeah. like certain like events. Like Do you know what events? You've listened to the whole Sira because like that's a big thing. Yeah. Sorry, you've listened to AC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's one of those things where like you might know mm. like which. I'd ask like certain like points in like the actual Sira that happened. Like for example, my favorite story of the Sira is like Hudaybiyah. Mm. Yeah, where there's a scene between the the people of Mecca, yeah, who are Muslims, yeah, but are Muslims in hiding, yeah, are coming to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and the Sahaba at, at, at um, just a certain point because the sah- the Sahaba and Rasulullah Sallallahu were planning to do Umrah, yeah, and then after they were making a treaty, and that's why it's called the Treaty of Hudaybiyah that period of time, um, and at one point, like the the, the people of Mecca, the Mushrikeen, yeah, were making the deal so hard. On Rasulullah Like it wasn't a fair treaty essentially mm. You know what I mean And one of the deals Was that anyone after this That accepts Islam Has to be turned back to Mecca Think about this yeah The only reason why they're coming out And doing hijrah Is to go seek safety You know what I mean It's like you being a refugee Yeah Going to another country And you're getting turned back You know what I mean And that was one of the deals of the treaty And Rasulullah signed it You know what I mean mm. Had to you know, there's, there, there was a bigger message behind this You know what I mean Tawakkal came into place mm. But think about this Do you know what I mean Like you're in charge Of all these people This guy or girl Accepted Islam Because they had faith You know what I mean And how did it feel For you to say like Yeah you have to, that's a big task You know what I mean mm. That's that's tawakkal On another level You know what yeah. I mean For you to say To the point where Like I said it in the episode We're talking about the Sahaba Where Umar started questioning it mm. You know what I mean Like are we not going to win Like and asking Are we not on the right path Are we not yeah. on the right path You know what I mean And there was like A series of questions I would have questioned it myself Mm. But like just that And then there's also like The, the, the battle of the Khandaq, um, Khandaq Where Rasulullah had stones tied to his stomach mm. You know what I mean Just to fight the hunger of the, the pangs of hunger mm. You know what I mean Just in certain moments Like how, how was it Like I'd, I just want a nice story time Have a coffee yeah. 
And and thing is, you can like, because it's eternal. Like you can book out like a years on years to like be with him. Mm. To have it just one on one session, Keep which going, is amazing. Yeah. Book a Le- uh, Latrobe Library room. <laughs> You can create that room if you want. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a bad room for to create. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dead room. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> 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 if, if you want to try me, don't know. But um, with the series, like it makes you reflect on your character as well, and how you speak to people, and like how you treat people, like giving people their full attention, actually like respecting them, like actually acknowledging them as well. Like there's one story I got up. Sorry, my memory's pretty bad. I've been writing a lot of things. It's good you wrote them. You yeah. have a checklist as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get one for you next time. It's cringing. <laughs> so, like, for example, like, you know, like, um, it's it's even got to do, like, it relates to even how the use of our phones, like, being, like, in social gatherings. Even me being in iftars, I've noticed this. Like, Rasulullah Sallallahu like, when he was with people, like, he had this beautiful ring, silver ring. And uh, he had like it's like he had a ruby on it as well as like from Abyssinia. I'm not sure, too sure. And then one time he was wearing it, and he would look at look at it a few times, like during a conversation, speaking to one of the companions. And then he was actually disappointing himself that he was getting distracted by this ring. So then he eventually took off the ring and then said to the person, like, "I was looking at this ring a few times, but I took it out of the way because it was distracting me from you. Like this is just him wearing a ring." Imagine us using our phones, like just getting distracted. Like how rude it could, how rude it could look, trying to speak to someone or in a gathering or in fa- with family. It just puts it in perspective, mm. like add that. Yeah, best so of character. Like, yeah, yeah. But just a lot of things I've been like learning from the series, just reflecting on like my own character, little things to work on. Yeah, it's a beautiful series. There's still a lot to go, so inshallah, a lot to learn. Umar Suleiman kills it with these series. Yeah, yeah mashallah. Series. 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 <laughs> series. <laughs> um, like there was the angel one last yeah, year. That was an amazing Yeah, I love that. Series. I think that single-handedly got me through like quarantine, Ramadan, lockdown. Have you listened lockdown. to Allah Loves? I haven't listened to that. That's no. very interesting. I haven't even caught up with this one here. Like yeah. now I'm due to actually yeah. listen to it. I, I can't do it now because I'm watching the Sira. Yeah. And Loyal. it's like you have to, you can't mix and match. <laughs> yeah. I read that. I'm glad. But the Sira is interesting bro because like what Ali's saying about we're supposed to emulate our life like for because of this person. Mm. Every single thing they do, we're supposed to want to do. And like we're supposed to love them more than you love your kids, your parents, your grandparents, yourself. your siblings, yourself. Every single person in your life, you're supposed to love him more than, you know? Like you'd want to, every single thing he does, you should want to do. And sure. it's like, how, like for example, you say Hudaybiyah. I have no idea what year Hijrah that was. I think it was like the last year in Mecca or something, but I don't know. Like I can't say with confidence. It's like, how can I say I love this person so much and I don't know, how, like Mecca, for example, 13 years, Medina 10. You tell me what happened in year eight, I don't know. It's like, I don't know basic and even in-depth things of his life. It's like, I should know him more than I know. I know my mom, what she did in her 20s and 30s, my dad. It's like, how do I not know Rasulullah mm-hmm. yeah, That's so when you told me to watch Yasser Qadi, it was like 105 episodes. Like, this is too much. That's a lot. Yeah. But then even him, he said, He's done it before. He's done 40, 50, like three, four times he's tried That's and he hasn't same. completed it. He goes, I've done 40 episodes, which is like a year of content and multiple mosques and, and stopped. And he goes, I would think, why don't I cut it down more? But he goes, I have to give it a tuck yeah. and I love this person and I enjoy the process so much that I want to go in depth. Mm. And then as soon as you hear him talk and you pass like the first five episodes, you're like, I'm never going to stop. And I wish it was 150 episodes. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 like, you know people have yeah. listened to it. I've never met someone who said, yeah, I listened to the 130 hours, whatever. And I regret it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Alhamdulillah, it's finished. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, yeah. it's finished. It's like, I wish there was more. It's like, I'm, I'm up to episode 15. Mm. And it's still talking about like the prosecution. Like yeah. when people were like, the torture that they were going through. Yeah. Mm. You know, like the first couple of years, like the secret da'wah and stuff. It's like, it's so in depth, but the amount of knowledge you learn, because sometimes we know we listen to a lecture, one hour on one topic. Mm. And because it's one hour, you forget about it. Mm. But when you go two, three, four, five on it, there's like, there's more to listen to. There's so you remember depth. more. Yeah. So it's like, okay, interesting. It's like, if someone goes to a story for five minutes, because it's only an hour, you forget about it. But when it's one hour on that topic, mm. you remember so much more and you kind of build a stronger relationship with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as well, with your identity as a Muslim. Yeah. You know what mm. I mean? Because a lot of us like are Muslim, alhamdulillah, because we're just born into the religion. Mm. But we still have to find Islam. Yeah. You know what I mean? Our identity as, as like Islam. You know what I mean? And Islam, like as in, um, was sent through Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know what I mean? And how are you going to follow something? You don't even know something about that person. Mm. And that also starts like a chain reaction 
of other things. You know what I mean? Mm. Like the sirah didn't happen in one day. Mm. You know what I mean? Same as the Quran. The Quran wasn't revealed in one day. The Quran is revealed based off of the sirah, essentially. Mm. You know what I mean? Then you develop a relationship with the Quran as you learn the sirah. You know what I mean? And then also from there, you get the khushu in salah. You know what I mean? Because mm. when you go to a fajr or a, I don't know, a maghrib or isha, you know what's being recited, you know? Like yeah. I was saying to you the other day, like there was a, there was a certain story that was saying, it's being said at tarawih. You know what I mean? And you can think back at the at the seerah and go, oh, that was happening at that time. Mm. You know what I mean? In salah, you're like, okay, I'm trying to make out the words and you're just trying to, and yeah. it becomes more enjoyable. You know what I mean? And you start there's, that process. There's depth to it. Much more depth like to it. Because it's like also, uh, as you know, the, the sunnah. Something like people say, what's the sunnah? It's optional. Like or maybe how we dress. Hobbless? No. <laughs> no, in general. No, like, no, but people, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. People There's link those terms together because it's like it's not obligatory, so it's optional. Yeah, 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 what we wear, how we dress, what we do, you know, how we sleep or how we clean ourselves, how we eat. Yeah. Like how often do we eat with our hands? Mm. It's like, you know, if the Prophet was then eating with your hands, there's no chance you're going to use a spoon or fork. But yeah. it's like those kind of things, like we pick and choose the sunnah mm. that we mm. like and what's easy for us. It's like, if we love him, we'd want to be like him. Yeah. So that kind of thing, you know. And that's obviously to me first. And you guys should call me out on it, you know. For sure, yeah. for sure. That's where Hobbless's famous video comes from. You yeah, know, he's like the, 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 <laughs> the table. That's every episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's true as so. well. And he asked the question. He goes, "What's the sunnah?" And he was waiting for like answers. And some guy goes, "Oh, it's optional." You know, he goes, "Wallah, yeah. love you, brother. Wallah, yeah. love you, brother." Because he's not wrong. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because that's how the first thing that comes to our mind is it is optional. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Because um, you didn't like just talking about the sirah. Would you guys want to be alive at that time with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? If you could pick, or would you want to be? Obviously, Allah, there's wisdom behind why He made us alive now, 2021. But if you could like have a choice, would you want to be alive in that time or now? That's tough, because like you're in the presence of Him, but then also there's so much trials. Mm. Like I feel like you can't you can't compare the trials, but they just seem like next level. Like you're gonna have to go to battle. <laughs> like, bro, like that's the first thing that came to armor. mind. Like, you actually have to fight, like, for the sake of Allah. It's like yeah. you gotta have true, like, s- like sincerity. Yeah. Would you? I, I'm, I've been listening to like the torture. B- so probably not. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's I'm t- listening to what the torture was, <laughs> and like, wrong time to ask about you. Abyssinia, like them mm. th- going to Abyssinia is like Uthman, Abdurrahman ibn Auf, Az Zubayr, like three of the ten Pamish Jannah all went. Yeah, wealthy Qurayshis they all fled and it's like because it was so like the prophet's <laughs> in front of you and you still leave the prophet because of how tough the torture is it's like if they're leaving <laughs> I don't think I can handle it you know what's yeah, funny you guys are funny well like like the first thing you guys thought of was like the, the prosecution <laughs> like the torture <laughs> <laughs> killing it shows the iman yeah, yeah <laughs> no, 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 no. each to their own bro yeah. uh, nah, because obviously it's Time and place. It's a hard life. You know, you it just is. said about the rocks on the stomach of Rasulullah. Yeah. He's higher ranked than us, you know. But yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know. Like, mm. I reckon if it was. I can in the Medina period, 100%. Like, obviously, I would want that because Islam's, you know, flourishing and it's the good stuff, you know. Like, you know, obviously, you can't pick and choose, <laughs> but that I'd be 100%, I'd pick it. Yeah, but yeah. But then, like, it's one of those things, like, I don't know if I'd succeed in that test. If I was there with the torture and someone came with the whip, you wouldn't though. Why no, <laughs> call me out? There's a reason why you're not there. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. Basically, but after one <laughs> whip, it's like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like I That's just, know, I know my iman. Like it's, it's. I'm not yeah. at that status. You know, I'm at that rank. Mm. So like, obviously, the good times, I'd pick that. Yeah. But yeah, it's t- it's a tough thing. It's and whoever question. says it, it's like, it's you have to really know yourself if you can make this call. But I think anyone would say yes to that question. Yeah. Like it's yeah. like a redundant question, you know, stuff in yeah. the sense that like, yeah. But it's like, could you live up to the the expectations of doing yeah. all that? Can you take the good and the bad? But I think the good always the bad, bro. Just being yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so so you know what we're forgetting? What? what? You know the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a he was a sign, yeah. Mm. He was one of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's like miracle, like he, he he's a sign of mm. something, yeah. Yeah. So seeing him is believing, you know that. Yeah, that's true. The problem is when you see something, and then you choose to disbelieve after it. The punishment is way more severe. Yeah, mm. days dead. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so yeah. And and we know that wavering with our intentions now, we don't even have anything to work off besides the Quran and the Sunnah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. The one thing that I don't want to do is make a statement like with my chest. Yeah, hundred percent. I'll go <laughs> there, bro. I'll be with the Rasul. I just kick it with him every day. Yeah. Mm. Mm, Obviously, these guys are talking about the torture and all that, but besides that fact, you know the um, Isa alayhi salam when he was talking to his his disciples. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they go ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to bring down a, a, 
a table spread from, yeah. from Jannah. Mm. Just so we can like, what was that thing? It was like a brunim, like, just like, okay, sorry. Like buddy. it was help strengthen my It's like, um, yeah. It will like, help yeah, strengthen like, I already man, believe, There's yeah. something in us, in yeah. our chest, that we can't explain, even though we do believe in of like, like we, we 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 do believe, and then basically what happens is they go, okay, we send down the table spread, but whoever eats from this and then choose to disbelieve, yeah. they're coming back. Yeah, mm. that's it. He's done for. Mm. Imagine you were with the Rasul the whole Sallam. time. And you were one of those people on that Yeah. That that right there is something we don't understand. For us, we're his brothers, bro. Mm. We we're Allah's oh sorry, we're, we're Rasul Sallam's brothers. He said, You're my companions, they're my mm. brothers. Mm. How amazing is that? Mm. We got a privilege in what we've got. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot of the times we can always play with Yeah. But, but, it's but it is still an interesting thing because it's like when you learn about their life, that the lives are so different to us. It's still similar, 100%. but circumstances stuff. So it's interesting to kind of say, like, even just think about. Imagine if I was living at that time, because mm. this is when the the deen got revealed. This yeah. is when the deen was perfected. This is when the deen was thriving. You know, these are when like the greatest people in our deen were alive. So Pioneers, it's interesting bro. to kind of like mm. have the perspective, like, what if I was alive then, yeah, and would I even want that? Yeah, you sounds know? sounds <laughs> random, but the food would be different too as well. And no, no, I'm seriously. <laughs> Like the dishes and stuff. Do you like know, that. it uh, won't be the same. They, they didn't eat what we eat. Like we, we two months for bro. coffee. Another thing as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> coffee. Do you know? Do you know <laughs> that the, the only the only bathroom that they had was outside of the city? When you said that to me last time, I found that like that was. Did explain it. Explain how you said it last time. By the way. So basically, because they didn't used to eat as much as we eat, and yeah. didn't consume, and they mm. weren't, and dates also. If you've had a lot of dates, you realize that it holds the stomach. Yeah. Mm. You kind of get constipated yeah. as well because the the dates they, they hold up the food for you yeah yeah so basically so you feel full for longer is essentially not only full but your your stomach doesn't require i i feel like the energy is not wasted yeah because usually when you when you go to the toilet and you do a number one or number two it's obviously to release toxins from the body yeah yeah, yeah or waste yeah so there must be not a lot of waste in dates you know yeah. what i mean yeah. or like bad stuff the energy Especially hasn't a couple used dates produce, a day. you know what i mean so for them, and they were living off of that. They were yeah. living off of dates and water. So then, like you were saying, and for them, like they would only go very rarely to the to, to the bathroom, and when they would go, they would have to because they'd have to go outside of the city mm. to, to 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 obviously use the bathroom. Yeah, and I was sitting there thinking, bro, I go like, okay, I don't need to know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Too much info. Yeah, yeah. But basically, like, can you imagine the type of humans they were compared to us? Yeah, yeah for sure. You know what I mean? The walk itself to the toilet, I wouldn't make it because <laughs> yeah. like think about it, yeah. Like, just dig a hole in the middle of the desert. <laughs> 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 Bro, just imagine you're holding it in and then you gotta do a long walk. I'm the one on all fours. <laughs> <laughs> you're walking like a penguin. Well, like, if that's what's necessary, then I'm gonna have to do that. <laughs> uh, if you could pick, would you have like a confident answer? Like I I'd want this this time now or hmm. back then or even in between if I'll you take know. that time, hundred percent. Not yeah. even it's not even a question. Yeah. But the thing is clearly this time is for me. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm gonna take it. It's like that thing because you j- ev- even wanting to be there just to see Rasulullah Sallallahu is a good, like a very the best reason. Yeah, just to see him, yeah, even for like you know, mm. I know exactly. What yeah, you mean. but for me, I don't know. I just don't like answering that question. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I, like, no, look, to me, hypotheticals in your mind. No, no, no. It's not that. It's just I don't. I don't like questioning. It's like kind of like I feel like I'm questioning God's wisdom. Oh no, I I, I see it as like mm. just you a, know what I mean. But it's not like. I'm conviction and I really want to no, no, be there. I, I just like it. I should have been there back yeah. then. Like, that's my place. <laughs> <laughs> Why did well, he Just a play around question, you know? No, 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 you know it's no, like really if mean, the yeah. prophet walked in. It was one of those. Sorry, like, Salah. Salah Salam. It's not going to happen. Mm. But it's just a play around, you know? But it's, it's, it's like the same thing about personalities and stuff. Mm. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm Ram- I'm I want Ramadan's been trending. I didn't get to talk to you about yeah, you know, Ramadan your boy. has been trending. Your boy Kyrie. Twitter, everything. <laughs> Khalid, bruv. We're going to matter to address him by his actual name. Who's Kyrie? Did he actually change his name to Khalid? No, he hasn't. Oh, it's I, call Khalid. Khalid. I, call, I call him Khalid. His new pet name. Khalid Ibrahim. No, Allah yeah. He accepted Islam. MashaAllah, man. What? Is it confirmed? That, that interview, are you call, calling that interview as an acceptance See, of See, when I listened to the interview, I was like, where, in, where did he accept Islam? Same. But later on, he said, I'm joining my brothers and Muslim in this like faith or whatever. I don't want to mm. quote him exactly. Mm. And not only that, I thought I was the only one tripping and there'd be like 10 sources out there saying like, Yo Kyrie, yo Kyrie, yo Kyrie. You know what I mean? So I'm like, why not? I mean Khalid, Khalid, Khalid. 
why not? You know, so that's pretty hectic. A lot's been happening. I don't know if it's happened. confirmed there. Because, uh, like, for me, until he says, I am I'm a Muslim. Muslim, it's like, for example, Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. She used to wear the hijab and carry the Quran. <laughs> and she used to talk about Islam, like the spirituality. Yeah. And she spoke about it so much. Everyone's like, is she Muslim? She is. She's wearing a scarf. But it's like, you don't know. Until they say, I am Muslim, uh, there's no point of talking about the rumor and stuff. Mm. But Kyrie is like, did you, see, you saw the Stephen Jackson video, yeah? He's on the verge. Yeah. You didn't watch it. Is that the one you sent to the group chat? Yeah. yeah. Did you watch it too? No, I never watched it. Okay, then you guys don't click what I said. Yeah? <laughs> 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 okay, Stephen, Stephen Jackson's at a mosque yeah. and they ask him, is Kyrie Muslim? What do you say? And he goes, eight, nine players in the NBA are fasting and you don't even know about it. Because we know Jalen Brown, Kyrie. And he goes, I'm talking to Kyrie and I'm telling him, just take the step. You're already there. You're already like, he's pretty much converted, like Stephen Jackson said, like he's pretty much came to Islam, just hasn't said it publicly. Yeah. So he's pretty much a Muslim in private. And then in public, he's not. So technically, is yeah. But, but until, until he says it, yeah. Because Stephen Jackson take is still, he could just. I I know a guy who said I'm Muslim, yeah. like, and he told me I took my shahada. And three weeks later, he stopped. Mm. It's the private. When you go public, then it's like this is my identity. Yeah. So Kyrie's S- Stephen Jackson's making an impact on the league. That's amazing. That guy is making an Mashallah. impact. He Come showed it when he converted and. La hawla for. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, I love it. What? Because he posts like That's his every post is like Asad or whatever, like of the yeah. sal- the the prayer and then it's like hashtag. What is that? Hold the four. Yeah, it's like la hold the four, and then how it's like ain. It's a three backwards. Yeah. yeah, not the three backwards. Like the, the three. three. Yeah. Um, his one is like la hold and I don't know which letter in there, but he changed it to four. So it's like la hold the four. It's legendary. Is it w or something like that. I don't know what it is, but that guy yeah. also has drip, bro. Yeah. Like 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 you know thobes and stuff. That guy has Gucci thobes. <laughs> Louis Thobes. He, he takes he 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 put Dean, yeah, and drip and culture together. But honestly, why not? Beautiful. And honestly, I'm all yeah. for it. Think about yeah. it. You know, what I mean? mm. if that makes other people who are like who love the dunya that much that yeah. they can't get rid of Louis yeah. and this and but that. I even love the dunya. It's like why not? You're supposed to kind of enjoy your money, enjoy your clothes. There's no point of him having. No, he but, makes good money. But that's a form of da'wah in of itself. Yeah. Yeah. You get what I mean? Like someone else thinking, oh, like all Muslims wear this cap and do and this Kyrie and do that. Resonate with that. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You know? what, what I love about him, he's not just an ex NBA player on social media and active. He has his own podcast and he's still interviewing NBA players right now yeah. and he's wearing the kufi as well, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. that's enough da'wah because... All the smoke. Yeah. And even Mashallah. when he first converted, I remember they were talking to him about Islam and stuff. He goes, as soon as I converted, countless people, baseball, NFL, NBA started messaging me. Yeah. Because these guys, like, it's a part of their culture where it's like, maybe not them, but their uncle or their grandpa or some random guy, their mate at school used to be Muslim. Yeah. So they, st- they, they know, like, how other people kind of view Islam they're like they know that's not true you know in the African community as well so it's good that these guys are now kind of taking a step especially Kyrie. yeah that's a big that's uh I'm that's gassed a he's, from, he's born in Melbourne he becomes Muslim come on that's every day yeah, he's Allah, coming Allah, on the yeah, yeah, oh, 100% <laughs> who are you taking for Stephen Jackson or Curry? what do you mean as a, as a guest as a guest I'll on kick the episode <laughs> 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 that was the right answer well, like, <laughs> <laughs> guess what I tell him take my smokers <laughs> Take all the books, take the room. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that, that's legendary. Yeah. We should actually get him on. Stephen Jackson, if you are listening to Fair Dinkum, we're going to hit you up in Charlotte. Oh, that's a stretch. Let's get him to tag him in it. Yeah, 100% Let's we'll get, get there. Hey, listen, we're also trying to get to 100 likes. <laughs> <laughs> Smash the like. <laughs> but what, yeah, what else is trending? Everything. With sports and stuff. Jake Paul, Ben Askram. You guys seen the fight? Oh, about them. Bro. I heard about it. Yeah. That's Did he how's their main? What an embarrassment, bro. How's that an embarrassment? Because Ben Askren went into a fixed fight. Oh, Ben was an embarrassment. Yeah, yeah. Come on, bro. He went in there, didn't train, didn't do nothing. You know what happened? Yeah. George St. Pierre was talking about it with Joe Rogan. He goes, oh, Freddie Roach, because he's, he's Manny Pacquiao's um, boxing coach. He's one of the best boxing coaches. Yeah. Um, Basically asked him, he goes, oh, because they put up videos of Ben training with him. He's like, Tim, so what? Ben's training with you for this fight. So he's taking it serious. He goes, he came for a week. He didn't come back. No. Basically, he was doing some Instagram yeah. stunt just to show, hey, like, don't worry about it. Watch the fight. I'm not coming in here. I'm not trying. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And basically, he went in there with his hands down and got clapped with a punch that you could have dodged any day of the week. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, oh, your props. Did he have the power to knock him down? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But come on, man. Yeah. He went in there, chubs. You went there not caring, bro. Yeah. Did he get a nice paycheck? He got paid, bro, for five, what? How five, was it? Two minutes? Five, for one minute and 59 seconds. How much? Just to enter the ring, 500,000. No, a mil, mil, mil. 1.5 well, mil, bro. He said that's more than he's made all of his career in, in combat sports. I that him. one minute and 59 well, seconds. What's the point of training? No, I don't, look, 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 I don't blame him. Each, sec- each 10 seconds. 
But you could have done that and clapped the kid. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. And shut him up. Just for some pride bro, as well. he's talking. He's talking. You need some pride. Daniel Cormier, bro. Mm. You know what Daniel Cormier will do to your head? Mm. Unless Daniel Cormier falls into the same rabbit hole, gets paid and runs off. Yeah. See, well, that's, that, that seems like the trend now. Mm. Yeah. Because he's fighting people with a question mark on him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, can he? Oh, can that, that, from you know? a marketing point of perspective. That's smart. It's that's brilliant. very, very smart. You know what I mean? Take yeah. the fight so you can. Like I was listening to Max Kellerman's interview and Stephen A and him were debating this. You know what I mean? And one of them was on one side of the fence and whatnot. And it's like you take the fight, get the money, yeah, and keep fighting and getting the money. You know what I mean? But in terms of how legitimate of a boxer or legitimate of a fighter he is, we won't know till he actually fights someone. Mm. Yeah. I think, and that's his that's his argument as well with the Ben thing. It goes, I fought someone that has fought before. Mm. You know what I mean? As yeah, someone has but fought he's before. He's a wrestler, mm. so we don't know whether or not he's gonna beat Jake Paul. Mm. Jake Paul's a boxer now, apparently. Yeah, and Ben Askren's a wrestler, mm. and he's a wrestler who decided to do stand up work as well now. So. We don't know. He might be a natural because he did MMA. So like, shut up, man. Do you see the way that he looked? There was like memes it's about him. It's like this guy, yeah, he is like he's weighing looked better than him after the fight. <laughs> what, bro? I was bro. like, did you see how he looked? I Dude, I ben Askren. Like ben yeah. Askren was funny, man. He had, bro. He had better love handles than I did, man. I love him bad. He had some nice ones as well, bro. And he, him with his nonchalant act and like, hey, like. Like him trying to make Jake Paul seem like he's some crazy dude and whatnot. Mm. Like the, the kid took it seriously. Yeah. Like like he he said like I'm gonna work hard. Like I'm pretty sure. Honestly, he, did he needs to if he wants more fights. Mm. So good on him. Respect for that. He he did his bit. Do you know what I mean? But was it really? It's not his like, it's not his forte. He hasn't grown up doing it, or like he might claim he has. Oh. But now for him, he's trying to make as much money as he can. Bro, listen. You know? I'll make it simple for you. But you everyone's know what just it is? It's it's circus. It is a circus. Bro, sure. how did you have those girls from TikTok come in and hand <laughs> you a title? And how did you have a massive robot in the background following you at the weigh-ins? Yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. What sort of stuff yeah. are you on? Bro, why was that robot? This is your sport, remember? Nah, cuz. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Boxing. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. It's actually a joke, bro. It's yeah. actually a joke. Tyron Woodley's dead now, yeah? I love this. He's you know dead. what I love this right now? Because Sahel considered himself it's to passionate. be a purist, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and I respect him because he knows his stuff, yeah? And there was a lot of debate, like this guy is disrespecting the whole MMA, the whole fighting scene. And to see Sahel work that so right now. Bro, no, 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 look, 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 don't get me wrong. You got your money, bro. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Well, I get it. But if you are claiming to be so good, I beg you, just go fight. Go fight Tyron Woodley. Yeah. I bet, and he's on his downhill, so you might have a chance. Because he's not, he's not riding, a, he doesn't have a massive confidence in himself right sure. now. You know? And Tyron Woodley is a smaller fighter than him. Mm-hmm. Go fight Tyron Woodley. Mm. I beg you. Mm. Take one of his right hands. Just take one of them. If you take on a... Chi- bro, I'll you respect you. Yeah. I'll pay for the pay-per-view, the next one. <laughs> yeah. How about you, that? Would you pay for a Connor versus Jake pay-per-view? <laughs> bro, I'll clap both of them, bro. Stuff for a while, man. These guys... Pause, pause, pause. Bro, I can't stand <laughs> Conor McGregor, bro. That guy, like I was saying, yeah. he created the circus. Mm. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah he started yeah? it. And guess what? The circus gets views, bro. Yeah, it, it does. It gets, yeah. it gets people watched watch it. it. Circus is half the spot. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. half the spot as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, bro. That's why Mike Tyson was saying on his oh. podcast for a hot minute. You know what I mean? Like he, he was claiming the mm. the poor brothers, Loki, or like the YouTube scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? With KSI starting and whatnot, revived the the the, the, the world of boxing. You know what I mean? Because he went from a place where it was sort of dying. You know what I mean? You had just a couple of big names. Mm. You know what I mean? And then you had like guys like Ryan you know coming up and whatnot. Back in the days, those personalities. Stuff, Personalities is where you kind of like have a connection with the boxer or with the fighter. It's like, I like him because X, Y, and Z. Connor, before like these YouTubers, he was funny. People just, people didn't even watch Connor highlights of the fight. People watched Connor's comments Wayans on YouTube. Yeah. His weigh-ins. And it's like Connor, water Connor, Connor into funny. The crowd. Co- Connor moments. Yeah, funny, funny moments. Compilation. Funny comments. Yeah. Compilation. That's what you watch. Yeah, and guess what? That. In terms of pay-per-view, Connor's up there. It sells. Yeah. And that's why it's like personality. So the YouTubers saw that and that's all they are. But They're Connor, don't take it away from him. He is a great fighter. Yeah. Excellent fighter. When it comes to big moments, you can't really name much past him. You know, That's that's how good he was as a fighter. Mm. I'm, like, I'm not disrespecting mm. him. But the whole... The as whole, a person, he's... The whole charades behind it and all that sort of stuff, bro. But the Jake Paul thing, bro, that, that, that fight, just watching Snoop Dogg <laughs> commentating... <laughs> And then you got TikTok girls and TikTok guys coming in the ring, handing him the title and getting G'd up. Bro, they bro there's a guy with nail polish on in this. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? 
Bro, they didn't even put the belts on properly. <laughs> Did you see that? And then there's that massive, like I was saying, that massive robot is just chilling in the background. <laughs> bro. Because he tried getting some sympathy for that. Because apparently, like, his security guard or his box or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And died. Then the, so he's dancing the, in the background. St- he, he died? Is yeah, that what? He had, like, a security guard or what? What was it? Say it. It was, um, he, he bought a robot, that whole thing. Yeah. That's because he said... When he came for the walk, he's like, oh, football team has mascot, NBA has Yeah, 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 yeah. Best gods. And guess what? Well, like, we're talking about right now. He's doing yeah. his job, so I respect him for that. So Imagine where the sports are going in a couple of years. Bro, this is what this this is what I'm going to say, yeah? Just imagine what goes up, getting mascots. What goes up? Bro, you know what? If someone comes out of a mascot... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm training him when I fight him. If that happens, yeah, I'm going to fight him. Get your paycheck. I'll get a mascot, bro. Nah, that, that, <laughs> Come that, on. Wow. Bro. That's actually crazy. Oh, no, no, man, dude, dude. Actually I don't, don't want to sound like a hater or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. obviously. No, I actually understand everyone, where you're coming bro. from. All power to everyone who's getting their money here. Yeah? Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah, I might be getting half? cut because of that. One and a half? Bro, he got more than, than Askren, bro. How much? He probably got like Who, Jake? nine or ten. Who, Jake? Nine, ten. Five? Nah, he wasn't split down the middle. It wasn't split down the middle. He he got they more of a bag. He, he got more of a bag, and he won as well, hundred yeah. percent. And he's a, he's the name, fam. Twelfth time mm. in like pay per views. It hasn't been exactly confirmed, bro. You know what I'm loving 12th? from all of this as well, huh? No, nah, it's not seventh. I double checked before today. Yeah, I double checked. I double checked. Seventh You're is one point. Double check. It was like two point something <laughs> million. I had to because I said it the other day. Jake and He said seventh. I'm like, that's too high up there. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's like a lot of my Connor, Connor, Mike Tyson, and whatnot. But they know why he's been saying it. it might Where's be my money, of, Dana? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it might Have be a load of, it might be a load of uh, ish. What? But their beef? No, no, not the beef. The the money that he's saying that they made. On top of that, he's talking about the pay per view buys. Mm. He's talking about on top of that, he's talking about the the, the actual fight itself being yeah. fixed. He's like, look, I'm not running a, I'm not running a, a circus yeah. because I'm running a place with actual athletes. Yeah. You know, it's actually a sport. I rate that though. That's a charade. That's a circus, you know? Yeah. That was what he was talking about. Bro, if you watch that and then you put it into comparison with the Usman versus Mars Vidal event That's that cool. was on, mm. bro, what an event. Some guy broke his leg. Some some lady ah, got head kicked, knocked you out. Yeah, Someone got absolutely blessed. Bro, what a right hand. Yeah. Oh, oh, my Lord. And you know, hey, you I know, watched that and watched that. and wa- I sent a link to a group chat. Yeah. I didn't send no links. They paid for it. <laughs> 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 they paid for it. And one of the boys hopped on, yeah, the fight as it just happened. He goes, Alhamdulillah, that I saw it. Just That just was a nice boom. Mm. It, everything about it was just like, the fundamentals yeah. was just right there. While I Calling himself Street Jesus. The in guy was, the holy water the guy was laughing in Usman's face as well, just before that. Like, mm. as he's acting cocky and stuff. He really does. That's what yeah. Masvidal does, then, bro. Oh. But they fought. They fought like men as well. They fought. Yeah. You know what the thing is? The thing is, when you walk into a fight and you think you're like the man, you're no, no, not the the man's fine, yeah. <laughs> but when you feel like you're untouchable and you're disrespecting mm. a guy who's actually a champion, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think I unplugged it? No, no, no I spilled yeah. so much water, and water on this carpet. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when you think you're untouchable, yeah, and you come in as yeah, no one's ever clapped me, no one's ever knocked me out, nobody's done anything to me. You know, I'm good. Yeah. He comes in. Bro, he got chin twice in the first round and he got kind of stumbled a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then I looked at him and I'm like, bro, put your hands up. What's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Like, Usman, you know what he did to Gilbert Burns in the last fight? What? Gilbert Burns quit in the second round. Jeez. He got hit with a straight right. Bro, do you know what a straight right does? A straight right sets you up for a hook. Mm. If you're knocking somebody out with a setup, that right hand must be absolutely amazing. Magnificent. Mm. Magnificent. You know how far he reaches with that right hand as well? Yeah. Amazing, bro. Mm. Not only did he get it to the full extent, yeah. but he clapped him and he shouldered him, put him down as well, and then kept hammer kept fist going. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hammer fist, that's all that. Wow. Bro, amazing. It was beautiful. Bro, amazing, bro. And just his look on his face, he was yeah. not expecting he was that. Well. He should have went to Dana White. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he looked at him. And plus, you can see it as yeah. it's coming, but you can't do nothing. That's probably the worst part of it all. It's like, you know this is going to be yeah. that... That nice knockout. Do you know what it is? He's talking about how he's getting <laughs> better as an athlete, as, as as a fighter. Mm-hmm. Allah al azim. The first time I watched this guy against Tyron Woodley, I was like, oh, wrestler. Here we go again. Who, Usman? Yeah, Usman, yeah. yeah. He comes in, next fight. I think he was wrestling a little bit more again. Third fight, uh, he's wrestling again. Fought Colby Covington. Stood on his feet and he broke that man's jaw. He made him quit. I was like, this guy is the real deal. But he needs another fight. He fights mm-hmm. Masvidal. I'm like, oh, he's back. Yeah. Then he fights 
um, Gilbert Burns, mm. and he takes a mad shot. Mm. Takes out an amazing hook. Yeah. This guy falls, and he's just sitting there, and he gets back up. Second round comes in, hits him with that same right hand that mm. he hit Masvidal with. Yeah. And Gilbert Burns looked like he saw the devil. Yeah. yeah. He was he there did, like he didn't this. didn't expect that, yeah. He was there like, oh, what the hell? You could tell he was coming to that match with that same fundamental from the get-go. He was just trying to make that, yeah. trying to land that, he was trying to well, land that. That's the strong suit. You, might, you have to use it. Fundamentals. Yeah. You never give up on the fundamentals. Yeah, just keep doing it. Excellent striking coach. Excellent yeah. striking coach. Yeah. Trevor yeah. Whitman's amazing, yeah? Don't get upset when you read this. What? Throw it, throw it. I'm doing a live reaction. Jake Paul wrote on Twitter, well, challenge accepted. Usman, if your boss Dana gives you permission to box me and make more money than you ever have, <laughs> let me know and we can raise some money. <laughs> I promise it will be your biggest payday. <laughs> he was taking he was taking a piss. He was at the fight as well. This yeah, guy does not catch fight. a break, bro. Hey. Yeah. But but anything to bet, he might make 15 mil or something. Uh, like but do you know, you know the thing about him, why there's so much people listening to him or watching his fights? It's because he's bringing a different audience to the match. You know yes, what I mean? 100%. Like a lot of people that already watch fights. Kids. They get <laughs> just <laughs> the young kids to the fight. Kids. Yeah. Younger yeah. kids are like robots mm. and mascots. And TikTokers. I think, I think with Jake Paul as well, he's trying to get over that the whole identity crisis thing. Mm. Like he's he still sees himself or he gets teased and like made fun of for being the Disney kid. You know what I mean? Like he tweeted, one of his tweets after the fight was finally transitioned, um, what was it, into into a professional fighter or something like that and he was showing his stats of his like 16. audience going from 16 year olds sorry 12 to 16 year olds or something like that to 30 year olds like 30 year olds are watch, watching him you know what I mean so that's probably his main objective out of all of this just to prove himself mm -hmm. change his audience yeah leads to destruction I believe but yeah yeah he's setting himself up for the massive 100% I don't know why but like this isn't me being a hater and I, I, look, I, I obviously wish best for everyone I don't care yeah. but I see him dying of a crack addiction soon mm. like that's <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bad. That sounds no, so bad. This guy doesn't want to talk about when, if he wants to be in the prophet's time or what the prophet would say. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, you, I you, don't know, you know, you know, with that life and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't surprise me. Because, bro, he thrives off of attention, mm, man. Yeah, he does. He loves attention. Yeah, I like, like, I like for, example, for example, when yeah, he like won God, the fight, he posted bro. that video to Instagram of him, like, throwing the dosh around and all that kind of stuff. And then he ends the video. No, it was to YouTube. And he ends the video saying, like, I used to be. Um, a Tyler or concreter for like ten dollars a day. <laughs> what an air age. That's in America. In America, start the from the bottom, man. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What are you about to say? No, there was a video. Yeah. One of his high school mates posted. They say we went to the same high school. <laughs> 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 a lot of money. Like a nice school. What? <laughs> Exposed. <laughs> like Exposed. Like Exposed. <laughs> but anything for attention. Yeah. But I think uh, we'll leave the episode there. You guys reckon? Yeah. What else is there to talk about? <laughs> Super League. Oh, it's like, it's like <laughs> 11, <laughs> 11, 11, 10. Let's, let's quit just talk about Super League real quick. Super League's dead, <laughs> obviously. It's it lasted 48 hours, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is your Literally. domain, Ali. What's your thoughts, cuz? I was talking to you about it in the car the mm. other day, yeah? I honestly think there's like a hidden agenda. I was telling you. I haven't told you guys. I honestly think, yeah. Tell us your So too. since it only lasted 48 hours, apparently like these English clubs, this is my thoughts. This is not reading Reddit, whatever. <laughs> so like the English clubs like all of a sudden confirmed yeah Super League and then what 48 hours all of a sudden all six leave it at once it, does, it just doesn't so make all sense all six I thought only a couple no the I top know. six all they left they the all time? left it, like within okay. 48 hours okay. and I don't understand how like you can join a massive league and then all of a sudden leave with, like at least give it maybe a week or whatever it is like mm. show the reasons to it but I think one thing I was thinking is that they're just trying to put things in perspective for the fans, like, as in, to appreciate the sport. So as in... <laughs> Didn't work for the Arsenal, boss. <laughs> no, it's never worked for Arsenal. Arsenal. I can't talk for Arsenal fans, bro. But you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? I know what like, you mean. Like, they're trying to put it in perspective where it's I'll like... Be grateful. You, exactly, appreciate the sport and, like, it's not as bad. And obviously, because fans aren't allowed at, in the stadiums in most of the European countries, so it's like, they're just putting things in perspective. I reckon there's a lot more about money than anything, bro. Yeah, yeah money talks as well. There was a lot of... Now there's going to be rumours for like five years. And I don't think it's just because of Shukr. I think, be great. No, I think they all Possibly cut him a check, didn't they? Yeah, didn't they, they, they all, they all got cut a check, bro. You always have to cut a check. Yeah. Always. It's because one like aspect. You have to kill the idea. Exactly. That, that three months later, you're not going to try again. You have to always cut a check. Yeah, so that, that will help those yeah. clubs that have founded it, which is Real Madrid and Juventus, mm. who are in money struggles. Mm. Yeah, that's why they jumped to it. 
You know what I mean? Mm. But so. I, th- it, <laughs> it's I was so confused when everything happened. I was like, yo, what is going on? Like, every, everyone was I was hoping it. for it. I, I wanted to so see it. Something It'll new, die yeah. out, bro. Yeah. See, as a guy who doesn't watch soccer, like, I thought to myself, first of all, what's wrong with it? Then until I started actually reading into it and I started seeing stuff like, oh, capitalism, the rich taking from the poor. I'm like, yo, I might have to read this again. <laughs> this guy's going back to oh humanities class. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. People actually, then I'm speaking about it. I'm like, what? Then I understood the whole concept of it. You mm, know what I mean? Right. And then there was this um, there was this podcast, like, the, you know Andrew Schultz? Yeah. yeah. Comedian. Yeah, the comedian. Yeah, he, he had a podcast and he started speaking. Guy. I'm like, this guy doesn't <laughs> even watch soccer. But he made a good point. That the thing about Leicester. <laughs> Leicester being a team that was like unknown yeah. and then they climbed, they won a championship or something like that and a lot of money came with that. You know what I mean? So if you're not winning money, Yeah, it's one of the not. beautiful stories of football. Like how these other smaller clubs get opportunities to grow. Same here as Western Bulldogs Premiership. What did the funny guy say? He said yeah, um, Leicester. So did Leicester. spoke about Leicester? Oh, for a little bit, spoke about Leicester. That was one of the points I took away from it. It's yeah. like Leicester won a championship and then with that came money and then they yeah. could like get better plays and whatnot. Mm. And it just makes everything better. Then when you got a league like Super League, and mind you, I'm speaking from ignorance. I don't know what the yeah. hell I'm speaking about. But when you got a Super League and just the top are always going to be on the top, mm. I understand. It, to an extent, it gets boring. But I'm thinking from the point of perspective, if I saw LeBron James yeah, going at it with Steph Curry in week in, week out, I'd love that. But it isn't like too much of a good thing, a bad thing? Well, well, no, well. sports. Listen, as long as Jake Paul's <laughs> not playing for any of the football teams, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. I went deep with sports, yeah. Don't, <laughs> bro, don't go and get me KSI and, and, and YouTubers now to come play in the Super League. Then I'm happy. Would I'll you watch you any that? day of the week, bro. Yeah. Huh? Come on, man. They don't bring yeah. you, bro. Oh, I, I trained football for two weeks. Now all of a sudden, I'm I'm a footballer. Yeah. <laughs> Axe, man. Oh, that's true. Well, like, that's true. Bro. That's true. There's there's an art to these things, man. You have to be. You have to be it. You can't just. Oh. You have to be Kobe at 16. Can't exactly, jump. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get that story. I'll send it to you, boys. That's why with Max Kellerman on that same podcast, I was speaking about like with boxers as well. If Jake was to fight a boxer, like an amateur boxer, like someone who's like a grassroots, went up to it. Now he's doing amateur boxing. He'd get knocked out because they're doing all the fundamentals from the get go. You know what I mean? Like the uh, everything just becomes subconscious. You've been doing some boxing. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> you're trying I to fight Jake there, Paul guys. <laughs> Call him out Call out Jake Paul Call out Jake Paul now Jake Paul Logan Paul Any of the Logan Paul brothers <laughs> And you can get it <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah We're at the episode there Asalaamu Alaikum guys Thanks for tuning into this episode um, Make sure to like Share Subscribe Do you guys want to say anything Before we end the episode No nah. Make the most of the last 10 days Of Ramadan Be conscious of that What if this was your last Ramadan Boom Hashtag yeah. What was the hashtag again Sus? Hashtag yeah, better hashtag. I forgot the hashtag. Don't worry about what the if hashtag. it was your last Ramadan? There's a bit of a twist to it. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, no, no. If you're on Twitter, we don't have Twitter, so we'll somehow see it. Mm. But write a hashtag, what if this is your last Ramadan? Let's get it trending on Twitter, <laughs> all 340 of you guys. That's <laughs> 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 just joking. You belittled them. <laughs> <laughs> we love all of you. We love all of you. We had a, we had a chat about that. We'll don't worry. We appreciate you all. Thank Sorry, you very much. Peace.